Hi everyone! <laughs> so in today's video I'm going to be making Raise That Shit Soap using the White Sage and Lavender Fragrance from Candle Science. And I'm going to be using this one at 6% today, which is a little bit above my standard for soap making, but this fragrance does tend to fade a little bit in cold process soap. And for our colors today, I'm going to be using this Lavender Mica by Brambleberry, as well as this Orchid Mica, also by Brambleberry. I have pre-dispersed these in some lightweight oil, so just pre-disperse them in olive oil. So we've got a tablespoon here of the Lavender Mica from Brambleberry, and then here we've got two teaspoons of the Orchid Mica um, from Brambleberry. So the way I usually like to do it with my colorants is I will just use a little um, one of those uh, milk frothers to get the oil um, to get the oil incorporated with the mica, and then I'll just break them off into pitchers or a little uh, whatever bowls I have. So I'm just gonna put this in here, and then when I break off my batter, I will have it all ready to go in each of these little bowls. And I use a separate spatula for each bowl as well. So in our live pot today, we have our Tussa Silk Fibers as well as uh, two tablespoons of organic cane sugar. And I learned this from Ellen Ruth. It really does uh, change the soap in my opinion. But I'm going to be adding to this uh, just some sodium lactate. And I usually wait until the lye water solution has cooled off, uh, usually below 110 degrees before I stir in that sodium lactate. It's just a natural salt that will help to harden your bars if you want to be able to unmold the next day. And uh, I usually like to be able to do that. All right, so our oils right now are at 83, and our lye water solution is at uh, about 72. So that is pretty good. I usually like to be within 10 degrees, um, but that is pretty good. So I'm going to be adding my lye water solution uh, to the oils, and we are going to then uh, hand stir in our fragrance, and then I'll be breaking this off into two pitchers. After I do that, I'll add just a little bit of titanium dioxide uh, to the main solution. The best TD I have found is the water soluble from uh, Wholesale Supplies Plus. And I've just mixed this one with uh, 12 ounces of water and we've got uh, six ounces of titanium dioxide. And I did also add 1% of a broad spectrum preservative. I uh, tend to like Optifin. Um, and I did measure this by volume. This was prepared a couple weeks ago. I usually like to um, use this up within a few weeks and then I will make a new one, but that preservative definitely will help to keep it um, much longer than if you, if you don't use a preservative, I'd recommend using it up within a couple of days. But I find that this method for titanium dioxide works a lot better just because I ended up with clumps um, with basically every other um, way that I've tried. All right, and this one is already starting to thicken up even though we're soaping basically at room temperature. Just because we've got um, all those sugars and additives in there and those are all gonna accelerate the trace. So I'm gonna be hand stirring in our fragrance here. And 
And this fragrance is really well behaved as well. It's a really good one if you want to be able to do intricate swirls and all that. All right, so I'm gonna break this batter off now. Pour some into there. Okay, and then in our main pot here, I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a shake. And you can just put some little steel balls or marbles in there, um, just so that way it's kind of pulverizing it. And then just a couple of squirts of that TD in our main pot. Just gonna hand stir that one in here as well. It looks beautiful. So I actually had that sitting for about two minutes because I had forgotten to grab my ring light for this video. Um, and I'm looking in the viewfinder like, you guys can't even see here what I'm doing. Um, so just so you can see how well behaved, even with all those additives and a recipe that has, um, such a high amount of saturated fats, that fragrance is just so well behaved um, in soap. Now, it'd probably work better if I used a whisk for this, but uh, that's all right. Spatulas definitely work too, especially if you predisperse your colorants. Um, spatulas can definitely still work in my experience. Okay, just making sure we really got those mixed in good here. And I think I'm gonna probably do a hanger swirl today. Um, I really, really like the effect of hanger swirls, so. And then I'm probably gonna top this one with some eco glitter, maybe some sage and some lavender. All right, so I've got our two Winston Walter molds here, and you can see that this one I've had much longer because the, the lid is kind of, um, the silicone is kind of getting worn out. I'm just gonna start with some of the white here. And I'm going to go in with some of that Orchid Mica. Just doing a nice little easy drop swirl here. And we'll come in next with some of the Lavender Mica. Such a warm, beautiful, rich purple tone. And I even this guy out a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna give these molds just a little bit of a tap here, since we are dealing with a thicker trace. And then I'm gonna go in with my hanger swirl tool and just get a nice swirl going on there. Going both ways. All 
right. And we're just gonna come in with the last of that white here. And this is where things get really messy because this pot is heavy and it's hard for me to hold it up and get all this. So I have just accepted the fact that when I make soap, I'm gonna make a mess. I know I definitely could get smaller pots, but you know, I purchased this pot and I'm like determined that I'm just gonna develop arm strength. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay, gonna pop that one in the sink. All right, and then I'm gonna grab the last of our purples here. Soap is really starting to set up and I wanna get another round in if I can of hanger swirls here for the top. It smells amazing. I love soaping with this fragrance. This is my second time and it has not failed me yet. Just grab the very last of our orchid mica here. I love getting every last bit because my customers get more soap that way and I have less to clean up that way. Okay, gonna pop those in the sink. All right, and I am going to give these a bang on the floor. Just go around those with my glove here. I'm gonna try to get one more hanger swirl in if we can. off my tool there. All right, I'm gonna give these another bang down and just do a simple little chopstick design here. And beautiful consistency. And last but not least, I'm just gonna add some herbs to the top. I think I'm gonna just do some French lavender here on the side. I know botanicals can be a pain, but I still really, really love adding them to my creations. I'm just gonna put some ground white sage on here as well. Just grind up those leaves really nice and fine. So that way it's easy for me to cut. 
I don't mind if my herbs get a little bit, like they wander a little bit. I think that it adds a more rustic look. And that is exactly what I am after with my soaps. All right. And I'm just gonna add some 99% rubbing alcohol to the top really quick. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm gonna be adding some of this silver holographic glitter from Brambleberry. Just to give it a little something extra. Just a light dusting here. Absolutely love this glitter. Oh, I love it. And then in about 10 more minutes, I'm gonna spritz this again with some more of the 99% rubbing alcohol. Again, just to prevent that soda ash. And then I'm also gonna be turning on my oven to 150 degrees, just on that keep warm setting, just cause I wanna force gel phase and I really filled these molds all the way up to the brim. Um, but I wanna make sure that these soaps do gel and um, I don't want like a partial gel ring. All right, so I'm just gonna give those guys another quick spritz and then I'm gonna be popping them into the oven. And our temperature right now is on the top there, about 125 or so. So it is the next day and we are gonna unmold these babies. With the Winston and Walter molds, I usually just take a butter knife and that helps me to just get right under the wood, just to kind of push that wood up so that I don't mess up my soap. And then I'm just gonna let some of the botanicals go like that. Isn't that beautiful? I am so excited. And here we have the striking obsidian and she is gonna be cutting our soaps today. So this one is my new multi-bar cutter that has, I believe it's 1.11 inch spacing. So definitely gonna be a chunky, chunky bar. I'm just gonna take some 99% rubbing alcohol, even though this is clean, and just go over one more time, just in case there was any dust or anything on here. I used this multi-bar cutter just once before, and oh, I absolutely love it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So, let me see. Actually, I'm gonna put it aside here so that you can see a little better what we are doing. Oh, love that sound. Okay, and then I just go vertical and then just kind of pop that out. Oh, beauty. loaf number one and then I'm gonna just pop out the second one as well so I usually like to break the air seal first just on the sides and then I put the loaf up vertically and just pop it out and then these will go straight to my kitchen sink uh, to be washed all right, and so I'm just gonna take our botanical side. Actually, I've got this backwards. So the botanical side is gonna go down. 
um, and the botanicals are down here so that the um, right angle with the just flat part of the soap is right here lined up with the cutter. And then I wanna cut um, some sample bars today. So I'm gonna leave a little bit at the end of each of these. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, that was a little bit short for a sample bar, but still getting used to this one here. So you can see what that first bar looks like. The next one here, let's see if we have any soap patterns. This is what Ellen Ruth always loves to do. Do I have that backwards? Yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh, we do. How beautiful, and the smell is just like this apothecary, subtle but lovely scent of the white sage and lavender. And this one, I it's one of the only scents that I do use at 6% just because it, um, it does fade a little bit in cold process. This holographic glitter from Brambleberry, you all. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I love this one. It's so beautiful. I don't know if it really picks up on camera, but I just put the most subtle dusting and I am absolutely in love with it. Next cut here. And then these I will take and cut into little sample pieces um, that I like to include with my order. So I'll just cut them up into little sample pieces. And then this soap, I'm going to actually leave it out so that I can bevel it. I usually like to bevel the same day, but I just let the air hit the soap for a while. Um, now, some of my recipes that are more fluid, I will not bevel same day. I will wait sometimes even a week. But um, with this particular formula, you can definitely just bevel the same day if you are using that sodium lactate. And I will have this formula um, that I am using today, which is one of my formulas, um, in the description box if any of you would like to try it out. Okay, so here, I'm gonna do just a little extra here for samples. Got our second loaf, cuts like butter. Got our little sample bar here. And then this one I think is a little bit more purple maybe. I got a little bit more of that purple, but definitely a similar aesthetic. And that's the thing with soap making that I really love is you can never make two uh, loaves that are exactly the same. And that is just the beauty of it. I think I'm holding these backwards. Oh, I am so in love. I think this is gonna become one of my staples, you all. I am so obsessed. One of the techniques that I wanna try soon is um, creating a mica line. That is something I've never tried before, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. Like a mica, mica drizzle, not a mica line. I have done mica lines. Not successfully, but like a mica drizzle. I would love to try in the future, but I don't really know how to do that yet. So I will be doing some research on that one for sure. Okay, and so we've got just our last little end piece here. Got a few more samples here on the end and I will cut into the little sample pieces that I like to include with every soap order. And then we've got 
The last four bars here. Oh my gosh. I am so in love with these. What do you all think of these bars? So hopefully by the time this video is live, they will be available on the website if you would like to purchase one yourself. Um, or if you just like to try out the formula, I'll have that in the description box as well. Um, but I am so excited about these. So I'm gonna bevel and then give you all um, just the last pan of these bars. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are enjoying, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. Um, I really greatly appreciate it.